The shift in the balance of power will mean if I... <laughs> <laughs> It has arrived. The Odin 2 is here and AYN has exceeded expectations by shipping units before the dates are out on their Indiegogo page. I have mine now which I purchased myself and it's the base model with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. There are the Pro and Max models which offer more RAM and storage but for my purposes, I didn't think the extra cost benefited me much. However, others might find that the higher RAM options might be more useful for some Android games, some Switch emulation, and maybe other OS options in the future. A lot has changed since the first Odin was announced back in August 2021, and it was because of that device that I started this channel and hoped to create some content that would help to get the most out of it. Since then, it's made a huge impression on people. It was a powerful all-rounder that many wanted a stronger Snapdragon chip inside. At the time, it was pretty much the best option for handheld Android emulation, and paired with the release and ongoing development of Aether SX2 for PlayStation 2, it definitely was the most exciting handheld around. That is until the Steam Deck arrived. The handheld scene has completely changed in these last two years. The Steam Deck really did jumpstart the handheld market to completely new heights, and there is no shortage of companies trying to get a slice of the market, with variations of handhelds from miniature pocketable devices to gaming handheld PCs. While this is somewhat of a good thing for the variety some people require from their handheld experience, it also kind of fragments the scene as a whole between varying customer support, potentially buggy software, and not always having a simple user experience of being able to play emulated games. And this is where the Odin 2 kind of comes in as a heavy hitting all rounder that does so much right. With the power to handle all emulation on Android, except for some Switch which is still actively in development, and that kind of echoes the development of Aether SX2 for PlayStation 2 back with the Odin 1, as it wasn't for another six months after the Odin started shipping until PS2 emulation truly got great for it. It has a good size, a good feel. It's not as large as the deck and has an excellent battery life as everything runs on Android, which means you get hours and hours of gameplay even from PS2 emulation. It's refreshing to have a new handheld that ticks so many boxes and feels like a evolution on ones before it, setting a new standard for what we should expect from these. While there are many cheaper options that do what they do perfectly and warrant the purchase like the Mayu Mini Plus for its size and efficiency, or the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus for basically being a more powerful, pocketable PSP, the Odin 2 definitely pushes quality and value at its base retail price of $299, and nothing comes close to that, not even similarly spec'd phones. However, for $50 more, you can now grab the cheapest Steam Deck model, which is now the 256GB LCD model, and have access to some high-end emulation such as Xbox 360 and also the Steam library. But it's a big device, and while the Odin 2 isn't exactly portable in that you'll likely need a case or a bag to travel around with it, it's definitely more compact and that's important to a lot of people. I imagine it might be a difficult toss-up even now between a deck and an Odin 2. It was a no-brainer before with the original Odin, but here you have to weigh your use case overall. For me, I managed to snag a super early bird tier from the Indiegogo campaign for about £215, so I got a killer deal here. However, the Indiegogo campaign has now ended, and the Odin 2 is now available at retail from their website. And as of recently, you can already start purchasing the Steam Deck OLED. The two models they have for purchase are a lot more expensive than the Odin 2, but it really needs to be considered for its OLED screen and wealth of improvements over the base Steam Deck, including a bigger battery than before. There's no question now that when it comes to bang for your buck, 
the Steam Deck OLED is a phenomenal device that only benefits from software updates and support from the community. If you want the everything device that fits the budget of a modern day console and you don't mind sacrificing some portability for its size, it's the clear winner. I also have an Ioneo Geek One S, which is a Windows handheld, so I'm not interested in having a deck for PC gaming, but if I hadn't already got one, I very likely would have got myself a Steam Deck OLED. I managed to get a early bird price, with the additional import tax the device cost me around £700. It's also like the Switch Pro I always wanted, so I'm not massively interested in Switch emulation for the Odin. So why would I use an Odin 2 over this? Honestly, it's a combination of carrying a less expensive and more portable handheld on the go, which completely handles any retro emulation I want to do, anywhere I want. And that battery life is a big factor too. If you're playing on the go, you really don't want to worry about charging unless you reach a destination or get back home. The Odin fit that bill for me perfectly, but the Odin 2 is just a better experience all around that I honestly don't know if there will be a better Android handheld for years when new emulators may come and more demanding Android games may arrive. So, in this ever-expanding handheld market with so many options to choose, is the Odin 2 the one? Let's check it out. Initial impressions of the Odin 2 are brilliant from the get-go. The shell feels a lot nicer than the original. The build feels tighter with satisfying buttons and triggers. The sticks travel further and are detachable which allow me to stretch some Vita thumbstick covers over them. The buttons actually feel a lot like the PlayStation buttons I ordered for my Odin 1 from Sakura Retro Modding but are softer to the touch. The shoulder buttons feel even more premium than before, and the triggers have a cool sound to them when you pull on them. And overall it just feels more comfortable to hold, despite it being only slightly larger than the original. If I had one gripe aesthetically, it would be a personal one, as I'm not really into the font choice for all the buttons. I'm sure I'll be buying some new buttons from Sakura Retro Modding when they inevitably produce some. I'd really love to order some soon if you're watching. Turning on the device for the first time was really great as the best surprises for me here were the incredible sound quality with those front facing speakers and the rumble which is amazing across the whole console. Listen to this, as you plug a USB in to charge it, it almost sounds like it's growling. The screen is a decent quality too, and using the saturation script from Kai's retro gaming review of the Odin 2, it just added more depth to it. I also found the touchscreen to just be very responsive. I feel like all of my presses and strokes were very easy to do. Everything I've described so far is, is such a nice improvement over the original Odin that even a minor upgrade to the hardware would have been a welcome one. But AYN has gone above and beyond here by putting a Snapdragon Gen 2 in this thing, and this is really what makes the Odin 2 a must-buy. So let's check out what this thing can do. Now, I wanted to kick this section off with a bit of a showcase of a front-end I'm using called Pegasus. Now, I don't see a lot of people use Pegasus, but the themes you can get for this are like really exciting. I love that you can get such different like vibes out of this uh, front end, whereas say Daijishu, it's basically the same thing with just like different pictures, but it's a very efficient front end. Whereas Pegasus, so it's not easy to understand. You have to set up every category with different metadata and you scrape all the artwork yourself, essentially. There's a lot of manual effort to go into making it work, such as here where I'm showing off. I made these little videos and then I took the first frame of the video and used that as the art for each collection. And I just think that's a cool thing as you sit there and mull over each console like, oh, what do I want to play? You just kind of like look at the little video, just something to like get you thinking. I also composed uh, a brand new song for this. So my day job essentially is that I write music and I did this with this theme last year. 
as I was customizing one of my favorite themes, which is Shin Retro, last year I added music and sound effects and I also tweaked the theme itself around and the creator saw it and they actually added my music and sound effects to the future updates of that theme, which was really cool. And when I was thinking about the Odin 2, I thought I'd really love to like put some more effort into this experience again and really get into this handheld. So I wrote a new song, I did new images and videos, and I tweaked a couple of things to my liking. And it was uh, it was a really fun thing to do as I waited for this console. And I really like, I just really like Pegasus. For me, uh, I turn it on and I feel excited about using it and it gets me wanting to play games. And I just, there's just something about me where I just sort of like something a bit more unique that's a bit more mine. So yeah, I'm going to show off the rest of this theme for a little while and then we'll check out some games. So those were the collections. This is the Android collection and initially you can just set it to show basically like all the apps you have in Android, but you can also customize this collection yourself, which is what I like to do. And because those aren't like games that you can scrape for artwork, you have to like make the artwork yourself. So I made little symbols and icons. And one of them that I did was for the Odin settings here. So whenever I'm in the Pegasus launcher, I can quickly just run over to the Odin settings and I can quickly tweak something I need uh, very quickly. So if that's maybe changing the, <laughs> the LED lights, maybe I need to recalibrate the joysticks or maybe I change the button configuration from Odin to Xbox if I want to change how like A and B works. Uh, that's something that will be important for me later with the Yuzu emulator because you can't reconfigure your buttons on your controller which is really annoying and I prefer at the moment the Xbox button settings and I've configured all my e emulators that way so whenever I go play Yuzu emulator I have to change it back to Odin which is like the Nintendo setup so once I do that I can go quickly jump back into uh, Yuzu. Another great feature of the Odin is what they've carried on into the Odin 2 is the two M buttons on the back of the console. So they're just two extra buttons that you can map differently. In this case with the Odin 2, they've added functionality here so you can actually use those as Android commands. And But they're really good buttons to have just in any emulator in case you want to like uh, toggle fast forward or some menu commands or even say like with the PlayStation 2, I actually use one of them as a pressure button. So, say Metal Gear Solid 2 when you're aiming the gun and you want to let go, you can hold the pressure button and he'll ease off the trigger and, and stop aiming his weapon, which is really handy. And then we have this run script function, so I'll probably talk about this again soon, but this has been really important at the moment because the Odin, at least the base version, should be running basically Nintendo Switch uh, a lot better and it just isn't so somebody in the community came up with these scripts to kind of like swap uh, the RAM around uh, I'm not gonna go into the technical stuff but what it does is just lets you play the Switch games as as they're intended someone was playing the base Odin 2 and was like this isn't right something is wrong so for the moment that's a temporary fix that will be fixed properly hopefully in early December I think AYN have stated but at the moment you have to enable this fix and you have to do it every time when you reboot your console um, it's, it's easier after the first time and you can also use the scripts to um, do other things. So for example, at the start of the video, I mentioned uh, Kai's saturation script that basically turns LCD screen kind of more into an OLED screen. So once you turn the saturation up, uh, it's quite comparable to an OLED screen. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it's, it's a lot better than it was before. 
And I also just want to show when you swipe from the top here, you have easy access to change the performance and fan settings. So I set it to high performance and set the fan to smart. So whenever it needs the fan, it will use the fan. Also, the floating icon will allow you to swipe and check out some Odin settings. You can do some screen mapping so you can set some buttons from you know the controls to screen functions. And yeah, you press that floating icon and it goes off. Right, so we're going to start off with Dolphin here. Uh, Dolphin is for GameCube and Wii. I just want to show some of the settings I have here. Really, with the Odin 2, there's not a lot to change. I have enabled save states just because I fancy it. We're going to use Vulcan for the back end. And I'm also going to turn on Compile Shaders before starting. And because it's a widescreen, I force it to 16 by 9 because I'm eventually going to use widescreen hacks. But here you can see I'm using four times resolution. I haven't actually tested more than four times because I wasn't too sure. And there's a couple of games that uh, are going to be using some uh, custom textures here. But everything ran really well at 4x. So I'll probably personally try a higher resolution on my own. But... You can see here, load custom te textures. We're going to turn this on for the individual games that I'm going to be using them. In the GameCube input here, we can set up the controller. So, you know, A, B, X, Y, just set it how you like. I like to set up a couple of profiles because for some reason, back around the GameCube days, developers were still weird about inverted controls. So for Super Mario Sunshine and Twilight Princess, left and right on the C-Stick are inverted for some reason, so I set up a profile to swap those two. We can go into per game settings, you can just hold the button or long press it. And inside here, I'm going to be changing the settings so that I can actually load the custom textures I'm going to be using. So something I really liked about the Odin, and I was excited to do it, was there's, uh, you can find these like someone has modded the games to have custom textures so they're like high res high definition textures and they take about a gig each for each game if you want the 1080p textures so you can install those basically there's a folder in inside the emulator and it's called load and then you have a folder called textures and then you have to create a folder that has the same like serial names you see up here because I'm looking at cheats at the moment, GMSE01. That is the serial for the Super Mario Sunshine game I'm using, which is the NTSC version. And I would dump all those textures into that folder. And you can also quickly see there that I have enabled a 60 FPS code. So this is one I found on the Dolphin website when you search up Mario Sunshine. So I went down, I looked down for the 60 FPS code in NTSC. I think it was one that was like revised or fixed. And that's the one I've been using. I had to enter it manually, but you can also um, copy it over if you're uh, using a mouse or got some uh, program or app where you can quickly like copy it over but yeah I also just wanted to quickly show that I was having a problem where when I pressed the back button and went to load my save state and then I pressed the back button again for some reason it was something to do with Android and the screen brightness would just get brighter um, which is what I think is that it's expecting an input or something is overlaid from Android. So to get out of that, whenever I've used the back button to go and load a save state, I quickly just touch the screen and then I don't have that problem. But I, I think that's an Odin problem. I hope they fix that in a future update. And something I didn't get to comment on before, I was tapping my controller because um, this this game is fantastic for demonstrating the the, the vibration of this handheld. Um, the rumble is so good. Like Mario's little footsteps and the water is so strong. And this is something that I'll, I I notice in other games. Like I'll be playing Zelda and I'll be riding a pona, and the do -do 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 -do, it feels so good. The 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 rumble is honestly amazing on this device and it's little things like this which I think are just a huge improvement over the original Odin it's um they're just like little changes but they all add up to feel just like like a, like a proper evolution of the last handheld and I mean I haven't even gotten to talk about Super Mario Sunshine but 
So, uh, high resolution, high definition textures, 60 FPS mod, and I've got Kai's saturation script to make it more OLED like. Uh, the games look really beautiful on this di device. Again, like uh, capturing it on this camera, it, it, it's not quite the same because, like, I've got reflective light and I haven't got, like, the perfect light to record these games. Um, but <laughs> they look so good and they feel so good to play. Honestly, uh, because I've just been comparing the Odin 1 and 2 recently, like, going on the Odin 1 to grab some things that I want to go put on the Odin 2 and I'm, like, jumping between 1 and 2, I'm like, oh my god, the second one just feels so good. It, it, even if the, even if this didn't have as big of an upgrade as it did with the Snapdragon Gen 2, I, I'd have been very satisfied by the, the feel and make of this device. So yeah, uh, Zelda Twilight Princess, I'm also using custom high definition textures, actually said high definition this time. And this kind of blew me away with uh, we're doing this on the Odin. And something else I forgot to tell as well. So in Dolphin you have widescreen hacks, but in these two games in particular and some others uh, that I have on the device, they actually have a widescreen patch that is patched into the ROM itself with a Delta X patch. I did a video on this. Uh, quite a long time ago using the Odin, so if you're curious, I'll leave a link to that because that has the links to the individual games. They're like YouTube videos for each game, and you can download the Delta X patch and you can patch your ROMs yourself. And the, having like native widescreen is a lot better than the, the widescreen hack because there can be glitches, there can be like 3D models that will glitch in and out from the, the sides and not uh, not rendering properly and it just makes the games pop a lot more I think and because this device can handle it it's like it's pushing those games to their limits so uh, actually one of the games I really wanted to show later but can't is Metroid Prime Remastered simply because it doesn't work on Yuzu yet uh, I tried and it, it's running but it's not displaying uh, any anything really <laughs> once you start the game so it's always nice to say hey we can play Metroid Prime on the GameCube uh, and it looks glorious in widescreen and obviously we got to test out F-Zero GX it's always a great one to test out this is one of those tracks that gets very busy full of cars and it just hasn't dipped we've got the whole thing on at 4x resolution and <laughs> it looks so good. It's the thing about the. I used to gush about the Odin One, and I still think it's a brilliant device. Uh, you, it does so much, and one of the reasons I made the videos for it was because uh, I believed that you could get so much performance out of it and enjoy so many games. But even back then, on the Dolphin, you had to use a fork of uh, of Dolphin, which was Dolphin MMJR. Sometimes MMJR2 or even MMJ, or, <laughs> there was different forks. This is all Dolphin, this is the native, this is the, the original version of Dolphin and it's all working perfectly. High resolutions, high frame rate, uh, plays fantastically and that's one of the things I was really looking forward to the Odin 2 is the fact that there was less fuss, less mus messing around. Um, less opinions, you know, someone saying it works better on this and someone saying it works better on that. Well, here's the Odin 2, grab Dolphin, you may only have to tweak a few things. I mean, that's the trend of this device. The only thing I think you're really going to have to start uh, making some little changes with is probably with Switch emula emulation and maybe a couple of PlayStation 2 games. Uh, I've shown a couple later on where the resolution, I had to lower it a bit more than I wanted to, but they still look fantastic. And this is Rogue Leader, which is notorious for not running great. So I had to turn off widescreen hacks here because there's loads of, uh, it just doesn't render properly. You'll see all these squares disappearing from the, the land textures and stuff. And um, it's running really decently. Uh, I played the whole Death Star level and there was a few dips here and there. I don't know if that's something to do with the emulate, because obviously this device has the power to handle this kind of game. It's just that Rogue Leader was made 
weird. <laughs> That's what I, I just like to say. It's, it's a game that was made weird, but was like absolute magic back when the GameCube came out. And it still has like uh, just a, a certain... It just feels special. It's a very special Star Wars game. There was a lot of love put into this, and for the time, it just truly evoked some of the feelings you got from the Star Wars films. So, really amazing stuff. Next up, we have some 3DS emulation. Uh, the games I'm going to be showing here on Citra are also using custom textures. So, first of all, we are showing that we're using the Vulkan API, which is something that was hotly added and talked about for Citra. We're going to enable the asynchronous shader compilation, and we are putting the resolution at five times. I have tried upping this for certain games, and that's where it started to kind of like hit its limit. So left it at five times, but it's it's awesome. The games look really good, and custom textures are on. So like with the GameCube games I just talked about you can get these custom textures that people have made so we're going to be doing this with Majora's Mask, Link's Awakening and Super Mario 3D Land. So I've shown Majora's Mask before on the Odin and honestly some of the textures look so good it's almost as if you're playing like a PC port of Majora's Mask you know that's kind of like you feel the the higher resolution you feel the better textures so Obviously, the 3DS version of Majora's Mask is the best version, but now it is one of the better looking versions because of these textures. You can see here on those bricks that, like, they're just a little crisper, you know? It just, they really pop. And with the 5x resolution we got going on here in the emulator, it all just adds up. And Majora's Mask is a beautiful game. I still haven't played the 3DS version, like, fully. I've played, like, a quarter of it and had to drop it for one reason or another so it's stuff like this that makes me like really get excited for a game again and go oh man I, I really love to check that out so yeah here's a look at Majora's Mask with the high definition textures it looks great
it's not necessarily worth showing Banjo Kazooie because it's it's just an N64 game. But I was testing things out, and honestly, just seeing this game all bumped up in a high resolution with a widescreen hack, and this is one of the few games I think has like a 60 FPS cheat code that actually works. So seeing Banjo Kazooie at 60 frames just yeah, and it's like, okay, I'll put it in the video, because it, it looks great, and it'll probably get people excited, you know, so, every time I play Banjo-Kazooie at 60 frames, um, you know, you forget how bad the game ran when you were a kid. You go and play this on the N64 now, and the frame rate's bad and everything, so, uh, you know, this is like how you remember it, so seeing it this smooth is awesome, and this game needs to be bloody remade. Remake it, now, please. Okay, things are about to get juicy. We're about to dive into some PlayStation 2. You can have a look at the settings here. So when you install this emulator, it asks you how you want to set it up. I just set it all regular, but going to the graphics here, I'll set the GPU to Vulkan, and I'm setting my upscale multiplayer to four. Four is kind of like the target I was hoping to reach. There are some games that can go higher. There's a couple of games where I've lowered it. There's a couple more settings here that actually changed. So a lot of these are set to like default or automatic. I've turned on anisotropic, oh, <laughs> I nearly said it wrong, 16 times, just cause why not? And blending up to ultra, I felt like I wanted to get like super accurate emulation going on. And honestly, just everything looks crisp and sharp. We've also got 16 by nine aspect ratio and widescreen hacks. That's pretty much it. I'm going to show here that I'm just jumping into Burnout, just left the settings on default, so this is at 4x. Burnout 3 is just notoriously hard to run. You would all, This is the first race and you would always see it dip here, like every time. And on previous consoles like the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and even kind of the Odin, uh, I, I made a video about these PNAC codes you can get to uh, change the performance so one of them would remove like this blur effect from this game and it just increases the performance of the game a ton and you don't need to do that on here. When I got my Odin Pro, this was actually one of the first games I wanted to dive back in and play because it's been so long and I love this game. And I didn't know a lot about the device so I was just happy to be running it at like 1x resolution and doing whatever I have to do. Here on the Odin 2, this is 4x and that's, that's pretty much it, it's running amazingly. And I've got no reason to believe that later tracks will be any different. Uh, I know there's a couple of tracks where it gets a little more intense, but I, I think it's gonna run just perfect at four. Uh, I'd be surprised if you'd have to lower it down to 3x, but yeah, great stuff. I'm not gonna lie here. So Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of those games I know at some point gets really hard to run. So when I dove into this and I chucked up that scale, I, I took it up to 5X and it was still running amazingly. Like at, even at 5X you can use the, the, the fast forward button and it will still run up to like 200%. There was only like one occasion I'll show later in the holds there's just this one moment when you're climbing down a ladder and you see like all the guards there waiting for the, the listening to the speech 
and the performance hits hard right there and uh, at 5x you cannot fast forward at that moment but I have a good feeling that you could play all of Metal Gear Solid 2 at 5x and it's not even just like the high resolution there's just something about it that feels smoother I don't know if this is just like uh, a placebo kind of thing you know where I'm just playing the Odin 2 and going oh my god this feels fantastic and it's just so good but I don't know it just it just feels like what I remember just like I said with Banjo-Kazooie it feels like what I remember when I used to play this game on the PlayStation 2 and it's given me a lot of excitement to maybe play it again and you know that's just sort of reminding me why why I love handhelds like this in the first place we we always get some kind of new handheld and new company making this handheld that handheld but honestly every now and then something comes along that's just a little bit special and I get that vibe with the Odin 2 it just feels a little bit special and it makes you want to play video games it's really really cool and so I'm trying to get into like a little firefight here try and spice things up and uh, I'm not having any problems with it and it, it was a lot of fun to play and thanks to the extra buttons you have on the back because if you try and play this on something else and don't have the extra buttons you can't assign something to have that pressure modifier since the PlayStation 2 had like every button was sensitive so you would like release the square button ever so gently and Snake would put his gun down so now we have to assign that to another button in this emulator if we want to do this so yeah climbing down this ladder in the hold this is when you can even see the speed in the top right it's just hitting red there it's not by much it really isn't slowing down at all but this is the area where say if someone said this game ran well on the Odin 1 it'd be like well unfortunately when you get to this bit on the Odin 1 it doesn't run very well so just testing some more things here just beating up all these guards and and seeing if the performance tanks anymore but it's not <laughs> they're rolling around all over the place and it's great yeah really excited about this and I, I might actually play this myself all the way through it's been a really long time and you know I hate to say it but Konami re released some really poor crappy ports of the Metal Gear Solid games and this might just actually be the better way to play them you know it's uh, I you know we should support developers and stuff but these are beloved games that are like you know really important to people and they deserve they really do deserve good ports uh, poor Hideo man he's, he's been run through the ringer a little bit now we're on to Metal Gear Solid 3 I actually wanted to show more of this game but the the video runtime was just kicking up and see this game runs at 30 frames per second but it's got more detail and things going on in it so it was also a difficult game to run and it ran fairly well on the Odin I I, I wouldn't say I, I didn't play it enough to go hey you can play all of this so I'm not completely certain about that but it runs fantastically on here and I'm just messing around with these guards just to see what's up I wanted to see if the bees would cause some kind of like weird um, effect or something because these Konami games like even in uh, Zone of the Enders 2 for example they like to use like certain effects that kind of like push the PS2 system and you wouldn't really know it until you have to emulate this stuff yourself so I'm just going to run around and beat up the guards here so I'll let myself do that Where's he hiding? 
Going into Shadow of the Colossus, I've reminded myself there's a couple of things I want to talk about. One is that although I am, yes, using Aether SX2, it's actually a different version called Never SX2. And this isn't a build that you can just freely download. You have to uh, compile this yourself. And it's not that difficult. There is the Aether SX2 Discord. I will link that. Uh, in the video description if anybody's interested because Aether SX2 does not work with front ends. Um, there's a whole story about that whole thing. I'm not going to get into it now, but the community got involved and now they have this version called Never SX2 and that does work with front ends. And I made a build of it and when I was testing games, for some reason Metal Gear Solid 3 would just not work. It just wouldn't open, which confused me. So I ended up having to make a brand new build of it and now it's working. And for some reason that created this problem where I couldn't make per game configs. And I can't remember what I did, but I managed to fix that somehow. I was trying to test Shadow of the Colossus because it's at 4x and it's running amazingly. But once you get up this canyon here to this, this is the fourth Colossus I think, when you stand here and the camera zooms out, the performance dips like quite a bit if it's like if it can't handle it and even at 4x uh, it wasn't handling it very well so I wanted to dip it down to 3x which is what it's currently at and I just couldn't save the per game config but now I have and it's working so this is Shadow of the Colossus at 3x but it's it's kind of hard to tell it still looks fantastic I'm not really sure because the Odin's a 1080p screen I'm not really sure for some people how much they'll notice a difference once that game is upscaled to 1080p like you can upscale it further and it might look a little sharper might have a little more um, quality to it but I'm not sure every, not everyone will like notice that immediately so uh, I think 3x is perf a perfectly fine target to be trying to hit with the Odin 2 but for me the, the sweet spot is somewhere around 4x and the games have been looking amazing so far and, and Shadow of the Colossus still looks amazing at 3x. And now we have Zone of the Enders 2, which was always hard to run as well. I could not get this game to run on the Odin, not even with any like compromises. So one of these com compromises would be called uh, GPU Palette Conversion, which is something I turned on it with the Ioneer Pocket Air, which is not as powerful as the Odin 2 and was released recently. But with GPU Palette Conversion on, the game was running smooth. You get to the first boss in the game, and there is these there's these effects happening, and it just the the you lose like if you're at 100, percent you're like going down to 70. So I was playing Zone of the Enders 2 at 4x, and it was running great until this boss, and then I changed it to 3x, and then it was running really smooth. But if you want to keep that higher resolution, and you're willing to turn GPU palette conversion on, I think you will get the game running really smooth. Uh, but I haven't played the game enough on a on an Android device to find out if GPU palette conversion might make something look bad later on. So, I mean, one of the reasons I really wanted an Odin 2 is uh, basically no compromises. That's the that's the catchphrase there. No compromises. You want to use the emulators without having to use a fork, and you want to uh, just play the games almost out of the box without having to mess around with hacks or enhancements or underclocking so it's it's been mostly great so far just very minimal tweaking and that's it for the ps2 block we're going to go back to the wii so the wii is also using dolphin and we set that to four times so this is donkey kong country returns running at four times and I didn't have any problems with this. I think there was a level later on I wanted to get to and I couldn't remember which one it was. It was like uh, this jungle with silhouettes, you know, so your characters look black and then you have these cool backgrounds. But 
I've got no reason to believe that it really wouldn't run well. This has been running fantastically, and it's the same settings I had for the, the GameCube as well. Um, the, only, the only thing I have done is match the Wii buttons to the uh, Odin controller. And uh, if you have any problems with mapping controls in Dolphin, uh, I did a video on mapping these controls in Dolphin MMJR. Uh, I mostly did this for the Retro Pocket 3, I think, but it, it, it translates to every other Android device. So if you were like s scratching your head, like, oh, how do I map these buttons? I, I do have a video on that. I'll, I'll link that in the video description as well. And then Super Mario Galaxy 2. I actually wanted to get further than this. This is one of those games where you always see like the first level or so, but uh, I, I just wanted to test it a little bit. One of the things that was a big problem with the Odin and other handhelds was there was a certain hack, I forget which one it was, something like EFB textures or something. And you basically, if it was like, it was either on and off and then the game would run so much better. But then you weren't able to use the Wiimote, you weren't able to use any Wiimote functions, which is uh, something you have to do with Yoshi later on. So the fact that you can now play Super Mario Galaxy 2 just in regular Dolphin and not have to switch that function on and off just to like, get through the game, you know, it's, it's just like, it's just a nice comfort thing, you know, like, oh, I don't have to mess with that stuff anymore. It's funny, really, because when I did all these videos on the Odin, there was it was mostly like here's how you get this game running well, tweak this, tweak that. It's nice to be able to just jump into a handheld and go, oh, I, I don't have to do any of that really. So yeah, and Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a game I've never actually fully played, so this might be the perfect time to actually play it. Okay, now we're on to the good stuff. This is probably one of the reasons most people wanted to buy an Odin, knowing that the Snapdragon Gen 2 can and should play Switch games. So let's just start off and say that this version of Yuzu isn't the Google Play Store one. This was actually released today for me and has something called NCE, which is supposed to massively improve, improve performance in games. So I just want to show the settings I have here and there's one I was meaning to have on in this video and I didn't. It was something I turned on after which was to have like AMD super resolution effects up or something. Um, I'm going to be doing another video on this in time anyway. So we've got Vulcan as our API and we're turning on NCE here as well. So those just a quick look at my settings. Uh, I'm most likely going to do a longer, bigger video on Switch emulation when uh, I think I'd like to see some more updates, maybe even the official update from AYN where they fix the RAM issue. Here's also the GPU driver manager. I've downloaded the latest Turnip driver. I can probably link this in the video description as well. I think I was also going through here and just showing that in the manage user data, this is where install game content, that's how you install uh, DLCs and updates, install firmware so you don't have to do it manually if you have your firmware zipped you can do it from here and you can also install new production keys from here if you have them uh, zip, well don't have to be zipped but somewhere on your device as well and uh, <laughs> so I'm using this uh, RAM swap which I talked about earlier in the video and again I can link this in the video description as well as the Odin 2 base had some problems with playing the Switch games they were supposed to be playing better. So with all that said and done and with this new update 
this, uh, so it's a version of user you have to download manually from the GitHub. It has this NCE thing. I'm not gonna go into it because I don't actually know too much about it. But if you say, watch Mr. Sujanu's videos, you'll see it like, hey, big new Yuzu update it might be coming soon. And then, uh-oh, it's out today. And so I'm playing Mario Kart 8 here. And these are levels I haven't played yet. So if Shader, if Shader's gonna happen, they're happening here and now. This is the first time I've played these levels. And I noticed some slowdown on this course uh, just here and there. But after this course, I was like, damn, this is actually running really well. There's also, so if you try and run Mario Kart without any firmware or um, the right production keys or something, so when you start the game, you'll get to the, uh, hey, Mario Kart, and you press L and R, and it'll ask you to pick a me and you don't have a me. It's really frustrating. I actually had some huge problems with this because I had already um, installed the newest Mario Kart update and the newest DLC. But for some reason, none of the firmware I was using was allowed me to get past this me menu thing. So, if that has happened to you as well, uh, so what happened is I uninstalled the the update and the DLC I added and had just the base Mario Kart 8 game. And once I installed, I think it was 16.0.3 uh, firmware, uh, the game ran absolutely fine for me. But as soon as I tried to update the game again and put the newest update and new DLC, the game just would not even open. So I, I don't know why that is. Maybe that's a, a Yuzu thing or something that they'll fix, because it would be really cool to have like all the tracks here, because you know there's like double the amount of tracks if you get all the DLC in the update. But yeah, I played a few tracks here. Uh, this and then Moo Moo Meadows and <laughs> well, I was excited to play Moo Moo Meadows again because uh, I got some fond memories of the Wii version and it was just running great. I, I'm i actually quite surprised how well this is running Switch and it's only going to get better like as I echoed at the start of this video. The Odin 2 feels a lot like the Odin 1 in that. So when the Odin 1 had its campaign on Indiegogo uh, PlayStation 2 wasn't even a thing on Android. It was mostly a rumor, and we all knew it like might be coming. And then it did, and then the Odin came out, and suddenly, like, holy crap, we're playing PlayStation 2 games on the Odin. This is the best device ever. I, I feel like the same thing is going to be happening here with the Odin 2, where once the Odin 2 start rolling out, and then maybe after Christmas, we, we might see some like crazy updates where, like, holy crap, uh, Nintendo Switch emulation is running so well and this might actually be a big boon for people with the Pro and Max versions of the Odin because those have more RAM and that RAM is going to be pivotal for such games as like Tears of the Kingdom because it needs more RAM to play. Uh, I don't know if that will ever be possible on the base. I, I haven't tested it myself. I mean if I'm going to be honest with you I'm I, I loved Breath of the Wild, but I, I didn't really care for Tears of the Kingdom. I, I honestly felt like I was playing the same game again with some with some different like functionality, and it's like some of it was cool, but I, I didn't even finish it. I, <laughs> I mean, I love Zelda. I love I loved Breath of the Wild, but anyway, this isn't a video about playing Zelda games. So for my purposes with the Odin 2, it didn't really. I didn't need to have like this like device that it, it must play all the Switch games. I mean, I think that's kind of the consensus some people are having about the Odin 2. Like, it must play Switch games. But I tell you what, I mean, if it plays Switch games, <laughs> Metroid Dread is one of them. Metroid Dread is fantastic, and this game is seemingly playing it very, very well. Uh, I really actually wanted to test some of the later sections, maybe a, a big boss, but... My, I have memories of testing this game on Skyline, for example, on the Odin 1, and it just didn't run well. There's all these graphical problems, and um, this is my first time testing Metroid Dread on Odin 2 Yuzu emulator with the NCE update, with latest turnip graphics drivers, and hopefully the right settings on, and it did not slow down. Um, honestly, super, super cool if you can just go ahead and play all of Metroid Dread on here. Uh, this is one of my favorite games on the Switch, actually. Um, 
it's so weird to think about the switch now it's like i <laughs> i want to think of it as a dying console but it's but it's not <laughs> it's been around for so long and, and nintendo have not made anything but you know when it comes to Switch games, if you're buying an Odin to emulate Switch, like, you know, I, w I would plead, you know, support the games you love, because if you really think about it, the Switch is like one of the first times ever where a, a currently active console can also be emulated at the same time. It it it's, it's genuinely bizarre that some of these brand new games are coming out, like Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Super Mario RPG. They're getting leaked a week beforehand, which is, you know, nothing new because people get review copies. Uh, people work in places where they can get early copies. Uh, but the fact that you can rip that game and emulate that console immediately, I think it's unheard of, really, except for the old days. So, it, when it comes to a game like Metroid Dread, you know, if you love Metroid, buy it because that's. That's what the, the develop well not the developers. That's what the business listens to. The developers would love to keep making Metroid. You know, uh, they love making the games they love. You know, but in order to make more Metroid, you know, like the shareholders, the people up top, they gotta go. Well, the game sold well, so yeah, let's <laughs> let's get another Metroid made. So if you want to see more classics uh, getting remade for Nintendo Switch, like <laughs> on a trigger. Um, you know, then buy Super Mario RPG, and Super Mario RPG is kind of an exciting um, thing in a sense, you know, because that was a partnership between Square and Enix. Okay, so hypothesis: imagine that Super Mario RPG does well, and Nintendo and Square form a better bond because the game sold well, and they go, "Oh, what else you got?" And Nintendo are like, "Oh yeah, wasn't that 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 one RPG you made for us, Chrono Trigger?" You know. Uh, how about that? And Square's like, yeah, yeah, we <laughs> we want to remake Chrono Trigger. Please remake Chrono Trigger. The Switch section is driving me crazy. <laughs> so Metroid Dread is running great. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. So when I did a video on the Aya Neo Pocket Air last month, I tested this game and it ran beautifully up to this point when suddenly it went crazy. Now, it actually might be really interesting to test out NCE and some other stuff on the Pocket Air because the Pocket Air might actually turn out to be still a pretty cool device to even play Switch games on. Um, I mean, whilst we're talking about it, the Pocket Air versus the Odin 2, what do I think? I mean, the Pocket Air has like a couple of cool things about it. I like the sound tap magic system. I like the way the the sound vibrates through the system. It gives it more of a an interesting feeling. But apart from that, like the Odin 2 kind of like smashes it in every other aspect, I guess. Especially sound. Uh, I've been t I've had to have a look at the Pocket Air a couple of times recently and my god, the speakers in that thing. Oh, it just it just, I don't know, it just feels so muffled and weird. It's, I don't even know how that happened. And then you get the Odin 2, and I remember, uh, I think it was yesterday, I was testing this, and then I had it full-blown max volume, and then I like went into my kitchen to like get some food or some stuff. And I can hear the Odin 2 from like three rooms away, and I think it's a television, you know? That's how good the speakers are on this thing. It's, it's honestly quite amazing. That and the rumble. The rumble feels so good in certain games. I'm still, you know, those are the things that are really like leaving a lasting impression on me. But yeah, geez, what a fantastic device this is.
Super Mario Odyssey is a game I assume when being tested on this emulator, this is the one that's going to be probably the most optimized. I was kind of surprised that um, there there are sections where, where, like, so here for example, the frame rate is dipping to like 40 or something, um, but it's only like on this world. I mean, there's some bits, so when I go to the next world, which is like the one with the dinosaur, um, most of that runs fantastically, except for a couple of bits where it like drops down again. So there's times where I'm convinced like, oh, this game is going to run perfectly. And then there's other times where it's like, I don't get it. It's not running as smooth as it should. So I got like some mixed reactions whilst playing this. The starting area was a little bit slow, but after this, there are moments where it just feels fantastic and I'm, I'm <laughs> it's such a weird experience it's also so weird to see a handheld like this playing Super Mario Odyssey this is this is quite like I don't know if this game is just so well made or what but it's just it's just a powerhouse of the game So I do genuinely think after some like big updates in the future, I think this is one of those games that they'll manage to get running really well on the Odin 2, like almost perfectly. I'm not sure if it's the case, like I'd like to actually see this game now running on a Pro or Max, I wonder if that additional RAM is like one of the key factors that actually just gets this running so well. At, at the end of the day, like no matter how good a device is, if it doesn't have the juice, it doesn't have what it needs to run the game um, then you're you know you're on a Hail Mary there hoping for some software updates that are gonna fix things for you um, yeah but when this game is running well I'm, I was actually having a really good time with it And that is the Odin 2. Yes, it's everything I wanted and more, I suppose. Just things I didn't really think about and all the power I could want. Uh, the PlayStation 2 emulation in particular was kind of like blowing my mind a bit. I absolutely love like how high you can get that resolution. And Yuzu was proving even on an 8 gigabyte model, you, there's some stuff you can do in it. And they're pumping out the right updates. So I'm very, I've got my fingers crossed in the future. And the same with AYN, like uh, pushing out updates for the Odin itself, like maybe they'll optimize some things even more. I'm really excited to see where this device is going to go. I absolutely do recommend it. And if you like this review, please give it a like. Hit that bell icon if you want to see more videos. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.